Bonjour, hello everyone, live here from Montreal. So thank you so much for joining me today for a very first uh, AMA on webinar. So in case we haven't met, either in real life or virtually, I'm Princess, and yes, that really is my real name. And no, unfortunately, I'm not real royalty. I am, however, a marketing educator here at Unbounce, and I will be your host for today's on webinar. Now, uh, as an AMA, this end webinar is fueled by your questions. So I'll be starting off with questions that some of you have asked while you, uh, when you signed up for this end webinar. But feel free to tweet at us. You'll see the Twitter handles there. Uh, if you have any relevant questions that come up as we go along. Now, I'm especially excited about today's end webinar because of two things. So first thing is that our special guests here, they're actually both based out of Montreal. So they're sitting here with me in the same room, which is nice, because most of the time we do these all online. And second, they both come from marketing agencies. And you know us here at Unbounce, we love marketing. So I'm super excited to have both of them here to chat about um, you know, all those marketing wonderful things. And so without further ado, I'd like to introduce them to you. So on my left here, we have Daniel Foreman. He is one of the co-founders and the uh, CEO of Ensuite Media. So Dan, can you just give us a, you know, in a couple of sentences, um, a brief lowdown of what your company does? Sure, sure. Well, first of all, thanks for having us. It's, it's great to be with Unbounce. We've been customers for many years. So it's, uh, we're happy to come and visit your offices and meet the great people. So in Sweet Media, who we are, we're a social media marketing agency for business. And we specialize in offering companies all the resources that they would need to manage their social media. Uh, I mean, it's, it's, social media has become such an integral part of business. It's become actually a, a true business process. So the same thing as companies will outsource their IT and their HR and their accounting. We believe that social media should be one of their business processes that get outsourced. And we offer companies the entire team that they would need, which is you know content writers, translators, graphic designers, programmers, community managers, strategists. Um, and often companies don't have the resources, they don't have the capacity to hire these people. And so we work directly with companies, and we also work with agencies uh, that will send us work uh, as well. So that's a little bit about us. Thank you. And then on my right here, we have um, Jonathan Nakash. John, Hi. he's also a co-founder, but this time at Webistry. It's also a digital marketing agency based out of here in Montreal. So hi, John. Hi. Can Thanks you, for having us. Thanks for coming. Uh, so can you just tell us a little bit about what your company does, uh, services you offer? Sure. Uh, so Webistry is an internet marketing uh, company that specialize in both brand awareness and lead generation. And one of the main ways we achieve this is through PPC advertising, pay-per-click advertising. Um, and I'm really glad to be here to speak about our landing page strategies with Unbounce. Very nice. Now, before we dig into the questions, I'd like to really thank both of you again for joining us here today and chatting with us. You know, we really like to foster conversations such as these among um, amongst our group of or a community of savvy marketers. So thank you for making this happen. Now, to provide a bit more context about the these two agencies, where they come from, I've looked around their Unbounce accounts. So <laughs> uh, they both use landing pages, you know, not just for their own marketing campaigns, but also for their clients. And Ensuite Media has actually been using Unbounce for about three years now. Awesome, yeah, yeah. And Webistry has been using Unbounce for about six months now. So they can talk to you about like the different ends of the spectrum there. We have someone who has been with us for a few years and someone who just signed up not too long ago. So with that in mind, let's dig into the questions. And I've actually grouped the questions that I've collected uh, when you guys first signed up into four categories. So the first category, it will be uh, pitching, the second will be pricing, and then we'll be talking about process and how did they design landing pages. And then the fourth category would be more CRO or landing page and landing page related. So one of the most common questions that we got asked is, you know, how do you explain the benefits of landing pages to your clients? How do you sell the service? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, we can start. I mean, for, for us, um, landing pages are more of a back-end kind of thing. 
So very rarely in the, the initial strategy we'll explain to the client. But when we do the work, we'll, um, the problem is we want to show a lot of our results in social media. So often if you send traffic to the client's website, if you send traffic to their contact pages or, or their lead pages, you don't have control over the content that's there. So for us, what we want to do in our social campaigns, whether it's you know Facebook ads or, or just random posts, is to really link to landing pages that we, we can control. So um, that, that way the community manager and the strategist of the account can have a, a clear pulse of how many leads this client is getting uh, off our efforts. Mm -hmm. um, so, so we really inter integrate in our strategy, but we, we definitely don't pitch it uh, per se, for example. Maybe, Jonathan, your, your approach is probably a little bit different. Yeah, definitely. Um, so actually, landing pages are a very important part of our pitch. Uh, it's part of our formula, and as we know, in PPC advertising, the market is uh, huge and very competitive, so you do need a formula to put yourself apart from the competition. Mm -hmm. And landing pages have several benefits, especially through Unbounce, using platforms such as Unbounce. First of all, a lot of our clients, even ourselves as an agency, we've had a lot of problems with developers. Mm -hmm. A lot of obstacles, uh, endless billable hours, late uh, deadlines. Uh, so a landing page through a platform like Unbounce uh, removes the need for a developer. So now we can do changes, revisions. We can optimize uh, our advertising pages, which are landing pages, without having to bill crazy amounts of dollars to find. But right there and then, you've got the client. So it's an easy way, it's an easy pitch uh, for landing pages. But most importantly, a landing page uh, is a proven way to convert your traffic. So it has proven higher conversion rates. And we've tested it, uh, like Princess said, we've been six months with Unbounce. Before that, we used to send our targeted traffic to our clients' websites, and we've seen crazy increases in conversion rates uh, ever since we started using your landing pages. Uh, so those are two of the benefits, and I can talk about some more benefits, but I think we're limited in time. That's a good point. I like the programming point that you bring, because that's, that's a big issue sometimes when you deal with clients, especially bigger clients, where, where there's a lot of layers between yourselves, marketing, and IT. Mm -hmm. um, so it's tough to get stuff programmed, especially if you know that, that the landing page is that, that there's on a client's website needs optimization. Mm -hmm. Because you know when you look at a client website, how often is the contact form very well optimized? Mm -hmm. I mean, we're talking about never, almost. Mm -hmm. So it's tough, I guess, for, for you and for us as well mm -hmm. to, to have control over that and, and then to go through all the layers to get it changed. Mm -hmm. But if you have simple unbalanced forms, you're able to just put them up in, in under an hour. And, and uh, have, you, uh, have you guys experienced any resistance from your clients in using landing pages? Like, uh, have you encountered any clients that are opposed to using landing pages? And if so, how do you approach that? Sure. So um, our case is actually a great example because most of our clients are very new to this, mm -hmm. even new to PPC. And we, we target those clients because uh, it's a great market to tap into. Mm -hmm. um, so big processes in educating them. So I wouldn't say the word is resistance, mm -hmm. but it's questions. They want to know more. They want to understand why should I be using my website? I put, a year into making it, spent so much money, and I'll answer them that's exactly the point. Is an unbounce or a landing page, any landing page, can be done in two days um, and can be changed the same day. I can add, modify, but most importantly, um, it's the easiest way for me to track direct results from your advertising dollars. And we're talking per campaign, per goal. Uh, you can have a campaign on social media and another on Bing and one on Google. Well, you'll have three separate landing pages that look very similar. You'll track individually your campaign, how they're doing. And there are other ways to track, but that's a much easier and cheaper way to do it. Yeah, 100%, especially when a client has many social media platforms, and they're always wondering which one works best for their business. And, and you're absolutely right. So having three different URLs, you have a similar page, and you can track where the leads are coming from, how much traffic you're getting. Um, a lot of times we'll use in social media accounts where you put your website, you know, we'll try to put custom links in there uh, to be able to control that traffic, see how much traffic is coming from Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, etc. So that works extremely well. For us, it's also all the tracking tools, you know, that, that Facebook and, and Twitter will give you. Again, it's hard to get those programs into the website, especially for large organizations. But we can put those right into the inbound pages and then build your custom audiences from, from that traffic. So for us, it works really well. Do you have a package that you show your customers, like this is why we use landing pages? Or um, yeah, I guess what when we when we lay out the strategy for the client, we'll definitely include them in there. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of times it will come after, uh, especially when clients add, add new services with us, wants to track more leads, more contacts. It really depends on the business and marketing objective of the client at the time. Um, 
but yeah, again, definitely very low resistance on that. Uh, as long as the branding of the client stays consistent uh, throughout the landing page, I think that's that's, that's very important. Yeah. I think it's uh, just to an end note. It's, yeah. it's most businessmen uh, understand when you talk numbers, and with a landing page, it's all about the numbers. Numbers don't lie. It's a slogan we always use at Web Street. Uh, numbers speak louder than words. And uh, the second you start talking with those words to a businessman. He's usually going to appreciate what you have to say. You're bringing a different solution, one that's going to save him time, money, and is going to allow him to put his his advertising dollars better to use. So. Awesome. Well, thanks, guys. Yeah, that's definitely one of the like people don't know how to sell the services yeah. of their landing pages. I guess in both your cases, you you're you you're more um, uh, transparent and telling them yes. you know exactly this is the value that you'll get out of using landing pages and then for you it's incorporated into yeah, the whole integrated in the process for sure. Yeah. Awesome. So yeah, there's no right or wrong answer, it's just how you deal with your own clients. Um, you just have to find like which way works for you better. And it also depends on yeah the clients that the type of clients that you work with. So that brings us to pricing. So you've educated them on the value yeah. of landing pages and you know you've taught them, okay, this is how landing pages fit into the into your marketing campaign. Now, how do you price these services? Sure. So um, in terms of exact pricing, um, that should vary from different markets, different agencies. So I can't speak of, about that. But the way we price it, a landing page has a fixed fee. We use the same fee for all our clients, uh, except for, that's for the typical landing pages. Some landing pages have you know more functionalities into them, like a more complex form system. Then that might vary a little. But typically, it's the same flat fee for all landing pages. Um, and then for landing page optimization, that's always optional. It really depends on where the, the state of mind of the client, if they're ready for it. And some industries just don't really need it as much, right? So landing page optimization is a separate thing, and that's a fixed monthly fee, not a percentage of ad spend. Okay. So what about you? Yeah, for us, I mean, our mandates are always uh, analyzed before when we meet the client to say how much work do they need, which platform they need to work on, and what are the business objectives we want to achieve with their social presence. Um, so we'll definitely price that in within the hours it takes us to do landing pages. I would say being three years with Unbound to having hundreds probably of landing pages on there we do have a lot of history of the best practices that we're able to set up so uh, what has worked best so often we're able to to really use what we know in the past so we'll put up landing pages really really quickly for us for our clients uh, just about changing the branding the colors but the, the functionality stays the stay the same uh, when we do price it in is when we'll do a lot of long-form content such as ebooks for example for clients which still work fantastic uh, on all social media uh, accounts, uh, we'll build landing pages into that proposal as well. So that'll be part of the overall package. So the research, the content creation, the design, landing page design, we'll do usually do two, three variants. Mm -hmm. And um, on our end, throughout the mandate, we'll optimize to make sure that we have the consistent uh, conversion rates that historically we, uh, we want to achieve. Okay. And um, so when you do you factor in the cost of the cost per click? So if you're doing a social um, PPC campaign, for example, on Facebook, yeah. is that factored into the cost or that the landing page service itself is different? So it would be factored in. So when the clients, for example, mandate us strictly for Facebook advertising, which is a big part of our business, mm -hmm. uh, we'll include that. that. That'll be part of the advertising setup. So not only set up the whole campaign on Facebook, set up the tracking tools, but the landing pages mm -hmm. and the, uh, you know, sometimes hundreds of various campaigns on Facebook. Um, with different variants to, to make sure that to optimize the, the text. So in that sense, yeah, it would be priced in, but we price it in more in our hourly, hourly work. Okay. And for Webistry, is it built into, like say for example, for a PPC campaign, mm -hmm. is it built into the whole campaign or landing page services is priced differently? Yeah, it's it's a set of fee for the campaign. Okay. Uh, it's, it's important to mention, we don't do any, right now, we don't do any PPC campaigns without landing page. So we refuse to, and often that confidence uh, is enough to convince the client, right? Uh, but we do give the price of the landing page on its own as part of the, the setup fee, but we break it down because we want to be transparent, we wanna, want them to understand what they're investing in. Mm -hmm. Okay, awesome, thanks guys. Um, so what about landing page optimization? Do most of your clients 
are most of them like, you know, set it, put it in the oven and forget about it and come back later? Or like, how do you get them to buy into um, continually optimizing the landing pages? Yeah, uh, well, to start with, uh, which is included in our fee for a landing page, we create two variants. Okay. Uh, so already there's an ability to, you know, A-B test. Mm -hmm. So that's included, that initial optimization, I guess. And after a few months and enough data, depending on the budget, of course, and the traffic that we get, we're able to decide which version we want to push the, the traffic to. Now, after that, it's up to us to kind of tell the client, well, hey, we can go get even a better conversion rate. Now that I've shown you results, trust me, I know I can do better, but I need to test because numbers don't lie. Um, and that that's when we start charging a monthly fee for optimizing and where we start A-B testing, changing copy, changing design, uh, and even testing out who you're speaking to, right? Because if you're targeting plumbers, well, maybe you need a landing page that's targeted to, that's speaking out to plumbers. Um, so that's how we usually handle it. Uh, you have a great point. I mean, anybody using Unbounce out there <clears throat> definitely have to look at creating multiple variants right off the bat. You know, it says there's very little value creating one version of the landing page without at least trying out two or three variants. So I think that's that's very crucial, and that's something that, that we do as well. Now, monthly optimization when we do have certain thresholds of conversion that we're we're looking for. So when they fit within that that threshold. We'll, we'll probably hold off on the optimization because we'll be happy with the results. It's going to fit within the uh, the objectives that we've set up for the client. Mm -hmm. If not, then we'll right away, even after a week or two, we'll, we'll re-optimize the campaign. Um, rarely we'll charge optimization fee because, again, it's going to be part of the, the client's overall package. Mm -hmm. And we take it on ourselves to really create quality landing page that, that convert uh, within a certain uh, percentage. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Um, all right. Just just going to take a quick uh, pause here. Oh, would we have a question here from Twitter from Anna Kati. I hope I didn't butcher that. How do you decide to use a custom URL or not on your landing pages? Um, I'll start off. Well, yeah, for, for us, uh, it doesn't make much of a difference. At least we haven't noticed any difference. You can do both. I know now you can integrate Unbounce into WordPress, which allows you to keep the same uh, domain name that you're using, use your own URLs, uh, without having to add a little extension at the beginning. But um, I don't find, personally from our experience, that it makes any difference, really. Well, since we're speaking to agencies, uh, not clients, I mean, obviously there's great value to having your own agency's unique URL on your client's landing pages, especially when they're well done. You get more visibility also for your brand. I think that's great as an agency. But for a lot of uh, clients, will do get their own custom URL uh, for their landing page. I think it, I mean, in my opinion, it builds a little bit of credibility, actually a lot. I personally look at the URL when I go to a landing page mm -hmm. to see where I'm clicking. So to change, to, to really for each client to get that unique URL that refers back to their domain, I think that's that's adds an element of credibility. Um, and I, I would be interested to, to, to look at the conversion rate changes yeah. for that. And in some cases, it's actually necessary. So yeah, so for yeah. PPC, for example, with Google AdWords, um, so yeah, so if it's one of your clients, and then they, you know, of course, if you send them to unknownspages.com, for example, but that's not exactly the domain name of um, your company or your client's company, that could take a toll on, mm -hmm. on their ranking. So it's actually necessary that they use their own uh, domain in that case, right? Um, it is, yeah, it could be beneficial in, in that way. I was referring more on, because we're always talking in my mind about conversion rates. And mm -hmm. It hasn't hurt our conversion rates when we compare one with the other, mm -hmm. but it definitely has some benefits uh, on the long haul for the client, for sure. Mm -hmm. Oh, you're right, but the default, it is on bounce page. We haven't used that in three years. So, yeah. I mean, the default URL is our agency's yeah. URL. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, but you're right, I guess. I mean, the first thing to do is definitely get off of unbalancedpages.com, yeah. put at least your agency URL on there, and then use that for certain clients, and then bigger clients, that's a great opportunity to upsell as well, to integrate their URL. Maybe I didn't understand the question. For example, our clients will have uh, start.webistry.com. Mm -hmm. For me, that's not using the same URL. That's what I meant. Oh, okay. Versus webistry.com slash Start market. Oh, okay. Right. So, like subdomain versus exactly. Yeah, that's okay. what I understood. So, uh, in my okay. opinion, Sorry. using a subdomain yeah. doesn't change much. But yeah, definitely uh, yeah. to have. I understand now. Yeah. Uh, 100% yeah. using your own domain is very important. Yeah. yeah. 
And now that we've kind of broken the ice and just dug into process, <laughs> uh, how about we take a step back and actually describe about the process that you use when you design landing pages and how you incorporate that into your marketing campaign. So mm -hmm. like who designs the pages and how do you work with clients with the pages? I know some clients like to be more hands-on and some are more hands-off, so how? Uh, well, I mean, our, our, the, a big part of our job is to work with the client's brand book. So often the clients will come to us with, you know, their logos, their colors and everything. Mm -hmm. So that's fantastic. So we get to build the landing pages according to their specs to make sure that it respects uh, you know their their corporate branding and then it reflects also the look of their website as well because um, often we'll redirect the, uh, the landing pages back to their website afterwards um, so that's that's what we'll do we have graphic designers in-house that that are very well versed in the landing page creation uh, but definitely there's an approval process as well from the client but I think it's great when you can show them a landing page that the client feels that really reflects um, you know their branding and, and their needs so that's, uh, that's that's how we go about it Okay. Um, in terms of who does it, uh, we have two ways of doing it. Internally, we do have someone that works on template landing pages, but we tweak them uh, for it to represent the brand of the client, the overall image of the, the, the company we're working with. Uh, but for more complex niche markets, uh, we do have an agency partner we work with uh, that does fully custom landing pages um, that are known for high, high conversion rates. Uh, so when it comes down to really niche market, we'd rather work with someone who their core, core product is landing pages. As on our side, we specialize in PPC, traffic, optimization, conversion, etc. cetera. Um, the process, there's always an initial session. We get very involved with the client. It's a, a Q&A session where we, it's very important for us to get a feel for the client's goals. Uh, if they have any services or product that have higher margins that they need to sell more of or that are more easily uh, sellable. So really to get a good idea of not just the company, but their sales process. Mm -hmm. um, and second step is we do a mock-up and a copy doc, because we usually take charge of the copy. And uh, we find it's very important to do that, because mm -hmm. it does make a big difference. Uh, third step is you know approval, one, one round of revision, and then we integrate into Unbounce. Mm -hmm. um, and after that, we're the pros. We make our own changes. We A-B test the clients. Uh, opinion on design or copy uh, becomes, you know, it's always taken into consideration, but we make it very important, uh, clear for the client to know that it's not about opinion or taste, it's about the numbers. And that's mm -hmm. test and see. Yeah. I love that comment. And that's so true. And we, we live that all the time with any kind of social ads that we're running. So clients say, oh, I like that picture better than this one. Mm -hmm. Well, it's not their opinion, like you said, that counts. It's really what kind of conversion, what kind of clicks are you getting? I think when you create landing pages or ads, you do have historical data, so you know what works best. But after that, it's all a business guess. And you say, oh, we'll try this image, we'll try this video, we'll try this layout, we'll try it, out, try it for, for you know 100 clicks, see how it works, and then, and then tailor it. But it's really important for the client not to direct your, uh, yeah. your, 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 you know, your layout at that point, because, you know. Uh, any opinion is good, you just have to test it out. 100%. I think a lot of our agency customers struggle with that too. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Because, yeah, our agencies, they, you know, they, they educate themselves on how to create these high converting landing pages, but of course, they're also trying to please the customers. <laughs> and so it's that balance between the two. So, yes, that this is why we have ADP testing, and that's why it's, it's you know, it's a great use for that. Now, like you said, uh, you know, you test a lot on copy. Do you put a certain emphasis on copy versus all other elements of the landing page? Like, how do you divide it up between the different elements on the landing page? Mm, I think both copy is really important. I think for me, a landing page, even as a consumer, is to make sure that whatever I clicked on, you know, when I come to that landing page, it reflects exactly what I was expecting. Mm -hmm. And then for me, that's the biggest thing. Even sometimes I see companies doing that mistake. Mm -hmm. You know, they offer X, Y, Z, and you come to the landing, it's not really exactly what you were expecting. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think for me, that's the most important thing, that both messages reflect the same, the images are the same, and that people click on, on your ad, that you get brought back to a page that they really expected. So for me, that, that's the most important part. Yeah. yeah, I totally agree with everything you said. Um, and I always compare it to offline sales. So your landing page is your personal salesman. And I don't know if you guys have any experience in personal sales, but it's always about the, you know, we call it the elevator pitch. You have one opportunity, that 30-second window, 
where you can get someone's attention. And your landing page is your 30 second window. Mm -hmm. uh, and you have that one chance uh, at creating a high conversion. And the message has to be loud and clear, simple, short and simple, uh, short and sweet. Um, so it is important to have a very deep understanding of the business you're dealing with. Contrary to a full-fledged website where you have so many opportunities to discuss, you have your mission statement about us, you have your homepage. The landing page is different, and that's why the copy takes a bit more importance than usual. Mm -hmm. Okay, and now that we've talked about you know diff testing different elements on the page, um, what type of conversion rate optimization tests have you performed? John, go sure. Ahead. Yeah. Um, well, you know, there's a few simple things. There's copy, right? The tone that you use can make a big difference. Surprisingly, uh, the, the person you're talking to, right? How you're talking to them, uh, in the copy. Uh, the placement of the form is it in, in the middle, up top? Is it at the bottom? Depending on the industry, that can make a huge difference. Uh, which panels you use? Do you, do you need a testimonial panel? Do you not? Switching around the panels. Uh, the call to actions. Can make a big difference too. Uh, just having a, a 3D looking uh, action button can make a difference, for example. The color of, of the call to action or the words being used. So, a lot of things that you can find online actually, and a lot of things that I found on the Unbound blog are very helpful stuff. And the, the key thing is, is two things keep on testing, don't stop testing. Uh, that's the only way you'll know. Um, follow some best practices out there, of course. Um, and secondly, try to target as much as possible to your target audience, in both the copy and design. Yeah, great point about targeting. And I think that's uh, <clears throat> the biggest value we, we tell clients about social media is the ability to be targeted, to target your message to people based on age, uh, gender, and, and actual interests. So if you're running an ad for a company and you know that you're targeting people for a certain interest, well, might have, you might want to be good to have that interest represented on your landing page. Yeah. So every campaign that you run on Facebook, even though it's the same product, but you can change your demographics and the interests of who you're targeting and reflect that on your landing page. And we'll see that that creates you know, a very, very good conversion. But exactly what you said, stick to the best practices. I think, I think Unbounce is doing a fantastic job of educating people on that. That's great. You know, Adding video sometimes could be great. Yeah. Um, we, we do that, especially when we have access to the video content for our clients. We um, also maybe limiting the form sometimes. I know a lot of times clients come up and they want to know 25 questions on their prospects, but you, you know, try to limit the number of questions would, would be great uh, for conversions, get down to just the bare essentials. Um, and, and yeah, definitely that's uh, would be our approach. What you said about targeting is very interesting actually. And uh, we have a lot of examples where, because on Facebook you can, or LinkedIn even, yeah. uh, you can target titles. Yeah. Uh, so if you have a specific profile of a client, uh, apart from age, uh, you know, different demographics, like, you, know, you want to target dentists, yeah. well, you can target dentists. And the content on your landing page can also target dentists. Uh, and for dentists that are very much about you know, their craft, uh, they like to deal with dental advertising agencies, that can make a huge difference. Um, so social media is very important. 100%. So in the age of, of hyper-targeting that you could do, I think it's really important to reflect that on the image of your landing pages. Uh, very, very important. And also make sure they're optimized for mobile. That's uh, it's a big yeah, thing. thanks for Unbounce for uh, <laughs> taking care of that. But I mean, we've had, to, like I said, three years ago, I don't think there was mobile uh, on Unbounce. Yes, uh, so the feature actually launched uh, late last year. So, yeah, that's it. so we had to change a lot of landing pages because I think over 60% of all traffic, especially when you consider social media traffic, uh, jumps even higher of people clicking on your ad don't want to see a mobile landing page. So I think when you check up on your landing page, check mobile first. All right, so we have one minute to wrap things up here. And we, you know, we've got, but my way too quickly, I'm just going to make sure that there are no leftover questions here on Twitter. It looks like we're good. Uh, so I'm gonna take this last few minutes again to thank the both of you for coming in if you do have you know specific questions that you'd like to ask them please uh, feel free to tweet at them directly their twitter handle you should be able to see on the screen i apologize for the audio i realize it might have sounded muffled um and because uh, i have a cold so that's why <laughs> <laughs> leave it all on dan that's right i'll take it um, but yes, this is our very first, you know, unwebinar AMA or AMA unwebinar. 
Um, so if you have any feedback or additional topics that you'd like to see for a webinar such as these, please feel free to reach out. We're always looking for your suggestions and feedback. And thank you again so much for joining us today and to these two. Thank, thank you for having us. Thank you. A great session. Thank you. And yes, I wish you all a happy Tuesday and have a great rest of the week. And for those of you Canadians out there, advance happy Thanksgiving. And yes, hopefully I'll see you soon in the, the near future on webinar. Bye. Thank you.